these are the items that we're gonna cook. So I'm gonna be doing some Polish rice. We've got barbecue chicken, a chicken stew, turkey burgers, chicken burgers, maple pecan granola, potato wedges and chicken drumsticks, shepherd's pie, tomato soup, turkey soup, overnight oats. I'm gonna try and do as many as I possibly can. I'm hoping I can get 10 jars, but it also depends on how many jars I have that are clean and empty. And we've got some hot cereal. Um, nope, scrap that hot cereal. We're also gonna be doing beef burritos and a fish marinade, and hopefully, if we have time, fish tacos. Today, we are gonna be doing a huge batch cooking. It's Sunday night, and the sun hasn't gone down. The days are getting longer, which is awesome. And I just wanted to go over what I'm doing tomorrow. If we haven't met before, I'm Angela and I live in the middle of the suburbs and I try and grow as much produce out of the back of our yard as I possibly can. But I also rent a quarter acre starting this year where I'm gonna be hopefully, fingers crossed, growing even more produce for myself and my family. With that said, I'm just gonna go over what I'm going to do tonight to set myself up for success tomorrow afternoon. massive batch cooking what I like to do is everything on the menu I like my post-it notes and I ran out of my little ones but usually I use the smaller ones and I just go ahead and I lay them out all over the island and then from there I basically when I go grocery shopping either in the freezer or my pantry or wherever I get all of these items from I then put them to where they belong I'm standing in my husband's office because we don't have any place to put this. And this used to be where I had all my ceiling trays on, which was awesome because the lights fit under here perfectly. I could get four trays on each shelf, but with the amount of canned goods that I had from last season, it just is not possible for me to have that kind of weight on the black shelves. Um, because I don't trust them. And already they're starting to sag a little bit with just having seedling trays on there. I have not organized this at all. I will be organizing this on an upcoming video, but nonetheless, it is what it is right now. And I try to come in here as few times as absolutely possible because right behind the camera is where my husband has Zoom meetings, client meetings, and all of that good stuff. He's really, really good at sharing his space because he also loves to eat. So in saying that, um, I'm basically looking, because I have kind of like a memory of what I need. Um, so I need some chicken. I've got some roasted chicken as well as some um, non-roasted chicken. I've got some cranberry sauce. I've got some um, carrots that I just haven't popped the rings off. Actually, this is the only one that has a ring. So I must have missed that one. I'm just going to go in here. I've got some potatoes I need for the chicken stew. I need a jar of carrots. And the nice thing is I actually like giving this carrot juice to my dog. She loves it. I'm just going to go here and pick out what I need. And then later on, I'll have you guys come with me when my husband doesn't need his office on a weekend or whatnot. And we're just going to clean this whole place up, which that's going to be a huge task because there's a whole lot going on in this room. <laughs> I am very limited as far as jars go, and I like doing overnight jar, uh, overnight oats in these pint jars. I also do have smaller jars, and I put the same amount in, but the nice thing that I like is these wide mouth jars, you can actually make them more runnier, which I actually prefer runnier overnight oats. My husband, not so much. So um, the nice thing is, is that I do this dry and then the night before you just add in all your liquid. So I just kind of do like a base of for every kind of flavor. And then the night before we just add what kind of flavors we want to it. So that goes really quickly. And it's also really nice because you can customize it. So let's do those right now. 
I like having my steel cut oats in this big jar and we use steel cut oats, but you could actually use just rolled oats. I like a more firmer texture to my overnight oats, but you could easily use regular rolled oats. And I'm just putting a third of a cup into each jar. And because I wanted to originally do 10 jars, but I only actually have six jars that are available. So that's all I can do. And this is really flexible. So right here, I've got some cinnamon and then I've got some dehydrated pears that we have from last year. And I love cinnamon. I can't get enough cinnamon and I also can't get a spoon. Hang on. So I've got a teaspoon here. I'm just putting in like the very tip into each one. our base for every single one so I put a little bit of that in and then also I'm gonna go in here and I'm just gonna throw a couple of pieces of pear in now these aren't gonna have the same texture as when they're rehydrated as like real pears and I don't have a freeze dryer. So they are still gonna be pretty stiff, but I don't actually mind having like a chewier texture in my overnight oats, but it's completely like up to you what your preference is. You can use whatever base that you want. Overnight oats are so easy. The night before, all you're gonna do is you're already gonna have this pre-done. It's gonna have a lid on it. All you're gonna do is pop off the lid. And because I like runnier overnight oats, I fill the water right up to, there's like kind of like an, a lip on this on the outside. I fill it right up to that line. My husband doesn't like runny oats. So he actually just does about three quarters of the pint full of milk. Whatever dry ingredients that you want, a lot of the times we actually sweeten it with maple syrup. So, but if you don't like maple syrup or if you like coconut sugar, or if you want regular sugar or brown sugar, put that in now. Uh, but any, any dry ingredients really. I'm just gonna go grab lids and these are gonna go on the shelf. My little one's down for a nap and I didn't get the 10 overnight oats that I wanted to, but I got six and I think that's a win. Here's my thought process for tonight. I have to make the, the burger buns and the bread need to be done, but is it like crucial that they have to be done? No. So I can basically scrap that for tonight and we've got bread for tomorrow and for Tuesday in the fridge. So I'm good to not do that tonight. It's not like super crucial. The barbecue chicken, that's gonna be super easy for me to do. I just have to wait till it thaws out, then I'm gonna cut it into pieces, throw barbecue sauce in it, and I might not even cut the chicken up in pieces. I might just actually throw the barbecue sauce in with the chicken and then put it back in the freezer. So with the chicken breast, I, I literally just do one chicken breast for the four of us, and what I pair that up with is over here in our laundry room, I actually have a hydro tower and I grow a lot of um, fresh vegetables on this. And right now, you wouldn't believe it, but I actually gifted two families an entire massive bowl of lettuce and I didn't even put a dent in this. If I don't have any lettuce because I'm in between plantings, what I'll do is I always make sure that I have frozen fresh veggies in the freezer and then I just have to steam them and then put them on the side. So we've got a super easy meal and I really go heavy on the veggies, A, because we don't need a ton of meat in our personal diets and that's just how my family rolls. Um, but we do a lot, a lot, a lot of veggies. If anyone, any of you guys have ever um, boiled cabbage, it is the most terrible smell and it lingers. It's actually, I find it worse than fish. So what I like to do is I actually just throw the whole head in the freezer and I find that it gives you the same texture leaf wise as if you were to boil it. So if you wanted to make traditional um, cabbage rolls and peel off the layers, once it's thawed out, you can totally peel off the layers, get the vein off and then roll them as you would normally. But with my family, like my kids just are not interested whatsoever in cabbage rolls when they're rolled. However, 
when I chop it up finely, and I'll show you guys later, um, it's, it's a total game changer. Like I can get my kids to eat it. No problem. This is my step one when I do my batch cooking in order to keep myself sane. Welcome back. I dropped the kids off at school and now we got to get all this stuff done. So barbecue sauce is the first thing and I'm just going to pull everything out of the fridge to make my life easier. Ah! And why not drop an onion? Because this bag has like a huge hole in it, I'm actually going to use it for something else. And we're actually going to have this piece of chicken for dinner tonight. So I'm just going to transfer it into a bowl because there's no way that I can put it back in my freezer. And these chicken drumsticks are still pretty cold and partially frozen. So they're just thawed off enough that I could get them separated. I'm just gonna squeeze as much air out as I possibly can. And this is now going back in the freezer. That's all I have to do for that one. That's just gonna be for, um, I'm gonna do like rice or I'm gonna do, um, I usually do like a, a vegetable, a rice, and then a salad. So dinner's already done. I'm just gonna go wash my hands. Over here, I'm just getting the chicken stew, the turkey stew, and the tomato soup all ready. to each one of these and just to kind of keep my sanity afloat what I've done is I've taken the post-it notes so that one over here corresponds with this burner which is tomato soup this one up here is chicken stew and I move this one over here for the turkey soup because that's the only one over here that helps me out a lot because when I go to spice something I don't want to get especially these two mixed up the tomato soup is going to be an obvious one but when I'm going to season everything and put stuff in I just like using that as a kind of a tool to help help myself out all right so in goes chicken stew you know what? I'm gonna hold off on that a little bit I just want my onions to get a little bit more tender and caramelized I just opened up a jar of carrots from last year and I just like putting it in my dog's bowl. She really enjoys it. So I'm just gonna pour the juice into that. I just cut up the garlic very finely and I had a really big clove and my kids aren't crazy about an overpowering garlic taste, which that's okay. So I'm going to be blitzing up the tomato soup anyway. So I just threw in a big chunk in there. But for these ones, I'm going to keep these soups chunky, so that's why I minced the garlic. I didn't really mince it, I just cut it up into small pieces without being too crazy. And now that my tomatoes have popped open, I'm gonna put in a jar of crushed tomatoes and this is just crushed tomatoes. There's no spices, there's no nothing. The way that I did my tomato, crushed tomatoes is I just threw a bunch of tomatoes into a roaster and just let them kind of cook. And it took about 24 hours until all the juice was basically almost gone. And it was a nice thick kind of spaghetti sauce texture and um, thickness. 
And then I just um, back, um, water bath can them. I'm just gonna be putting in my bay leaves. And this is corn on the cob that I bought from the store just before we went away. And I didn't want it to go bad, so I just threw the whole cob in the freezer. I didn't blanch it. I don't blanch my corn ever. Um, and I find that the texture, like they're still nice and firm. They still pop in your mouth. I don't find it necessary, and that's just my preference, to blanch corn especially when you're about to freeze it. And then all of these cobs I'm putting into my separate bowl. And I do this every time that I'm cooking because this bowl is gonna go into my scrap pile in the freezer. And then this is what I use when I make all of my stocks. So what I do is the first layer of onion peel, I toss because I don't, I don't, I just don't wash them. And then I figure this is kind of like a package for the rest of the onion. So I always peel off the top layer. I get rid of that little nub where the leaves were. And then I have everything underneath that is so beautiful and lovely. And it gives a nice dark, rich color to all of my broths. And I find this adds just such an, a depth of flavor. And then this is gonna add such an awesome flavor to anything that I have in that broth. You can see I've got nice color on my uh, onions. So now I'm ready for the next step. And I'm just gonna do kind of like a 50-50 of the corn. So a little bit into the chicken, but then the majority of it is gonna go in with the turkey. And I wanna do kind of like a turkey dinner with this soup. I just realized I completely forgot about the celery. So I'm just gonna go wash it, cut it up, and throw it in. Once you're done chopping everything, it's really nice kind of combining these two stews. And if you want another episode on stews, I actually did, I think it was four different stews at the same time. I did a pork, turkey, I forget what else, but I'll link that episode down below if you're looking at a, if you're wanting to do a batch cooking stew edition. So I'll link that down below. The reason why I really like doing a chicken and a turkey stew at the same time is at the beginning, they're both the exact same. So they're both gonna have onions and carrots and celery and all of those veggies. And I happen to put in corn into mine, you don't have to. But I like the fact that I can start both of them at the exact same time and I don't have to worry about it. So when I'm cutting up my celery, I do a little bit for this pot and a little bit for that pot. Because I wanna do a Thanksgiving flavor to this stew, I'm gonna be using different spices and obviously my meat is different. But the stock, I've got some turkey stock in the pantry, so I'm gonna use that and I'm gonna leave it at that. And then my chicken stew, I'm gonna grab chicken stock that I've got in the pantry. And obviously my chicken and my spices are gonna be different than the turkey. So now that I've got all of my vegetables uh, done and in their pots, I am now gonna do the meat. And I like doing the meat after all of the vegetables because then I don't have to worry about cross-contaminating and any all that grossness that comes with cutting up meat, raw meat. So now that I've got all of my veggies done, I've got basically all of my setup done and ready for meat. And then once I'm done all that, then I can just wash everything and then all I have to do is worry about the spices in the broth. This is my roasted red pepper sauce. Uh, I also use it as a spaghetti sauce. I love this stuff. It was it came out of the Bernadin cookbook and it's the roasted red pepper sauce. And I use this as pizza sauce, spaghetti sauce. I love adding it to my tomato sauce, uh, my tomato soup. It just gives it such a different kind of barbecue-y type taste to it. Oh. It is absolutely amazing. All right, so I've added my, chi my chicken stock to this one, my turkey stock to this, and I might actually open up another jar of tem um, turkey, uh, turkey stock and add it to that one. The chicken stock, I don't like to thicken it. My family just doesn't like it thick. They like it brothy looking like this. So now all I'm gonna do, you know what, I am gonna add another one to that. I always make sure to swirl around the bottom because I find like at 
with homemade broth, there's a lot of sediment that happens at the bottom. And I want all of that yummy flavor to come out of the jar. All right, so let's just give this one good mix. This is a fine herb blend. I'll write down what I have and I'm doing like a, basically almost two, ta two tablespoons of that into there. And then we've got to think of turkey spices. So what would you like to have for Thanksgiving? So rosemary, totally love that one. So we're gonna do half a teaspoon of that one. And of course, sage. I've never had a turkey without sage. So we're gonna do three quarters of, we're gonna do a teaspoon of that. And then thyme is up here. And for thyme, we're also gonna be adding a half teaspoon, maybe like a quarter teaspoon. No, like a half teaspoon to the chicken. And we're gonna be doing uh, maybe like three quarters of a teaspoon in the turkey. And then I haven't done my pepper yet. And because we're not blitzing this one, I've got my pepper grinder and this is a blend. So this has pink peppers, black peppers, white pepper, corns in it. There we go. And that's maybe about mm, half a teaspoon worth. And we're just gonna give everything a nice little stir. And if you have other uh, spices that you really like putting in with your turkey, then by all means do so right now. The other thing that I'm going to add to my chicken stew is a touch of lime juice. Well, either lime or lemon. I don't know what I have in the fridge. So I'm gonna add just a, like a teaspoon of it. What have I got? Okay, so I've got a little bit of lemon. I just finished pressure canning everything. So we've got the turkey uh, stew. I did, we en did end up having the chicken stew for dinner. So I just pressure canned the rest of it. And I didn't really have enough to fill the, the one liter jar. So what I did is I went into the fridge and I used up some steamed vegetables. I threw that in. And I also had a little bit of leftover broth from the other day. So I threw that in and then I pressure canned it. So I've just pulled out the last batch out of there. So now I actually have a burner that's available on my stove. Three things that we have left to do are shepherd's pie, which I'm going to put with beef, a Polish turkey rice, which is kind of like a spin-off of cabbage rolls, and chicken burritos. Now, anytime that I'm doing bulk cooking like this, I'm always, always, always looking for scraps around the house. So the thing that I found is I did have other plans to do with this rice, but I've got two containers of leftover rice from the other night, so I don't have to make rice now, which is awesome. When I was canning up the tomato soup, I had like this much left over that didn't really fit in into anything, and I didn't want to eat it, nobody was hungry, so I just stuck it in a mug, and now I can put it into the Polish, uh, Polish rice, which is awesome. And I've got a little bit of red onion, I've got um, obviously my onions, I have one carrot, I have half a pepper that needs to be eaten, it's getting kind of um, soft. I have another pepper that's kind of kind of wrinkled. I've got my three pieces of celery. I've got a couple of pieces of celery from earlier when I was making. And I found some peppers that I had put in with the corn, and actually I forgot a corn in here. But this is actually the last bag of broccoli that I have. And I can find a way to shove veggies into our food I'll do it. I am not ashamed to do it. So I've minced up some broccoli because I'm thinking that I can throw this into either the burritos, I can throw it in there, I can throw it into the shepherd's pie. I'm not gonna put it into the rice because I wanna really, the Polish rice, I wanna really try to keep that traditional kind of like cabbage rolly taste. And the broccoli, we eat enough vegetables that just the cabbage alone, I think will be sufficient. The one thing that I did want to show you guys is my cabbage. So it is now thawed, it's nice and squishy. Now, when I, like I said, when I buy it at the grocery store, 
I literally just throw the whole head in. I don't wash it. I don't do anything. I literally just throw it in as is. When I pull it out, now this will kind of drain quite a bit of water. So I always like to keep it on a plate. I just end up peeling off the top layer. And that's the layer that everyone would have touched at the grocery store anyways. And even if I were to boil it, I don't use this at all anyways. And then I've got this beautiful head of cabbage. All you have to do for the Polish um, rice, which we're gonna start off with because I already have the rice done, is you're just gonna cut this up into pieces like you would a stir fry except you're gonna do a little bit smaller. So if the only reason why I do a little bit smaller is because I've got kids, but if you have adults, just like inch and a half by inch and a half squares is perfectly fine. I cut the cabbage into four and I just took all the stems out and now I'm just cutting it into pieces. So because I've got little ones, my slicing is gonna be quite a bit smaller than what you're gonna to need to do. And if I had like older kids in the house, I would be okay with just leaving it as, you know, like one by one inch pieces. Okay, so we are going to cut up some onions and these are just regular swimming goggles. They're nothing spectacular. I get made fun of all the time for wearing them, but I personally don't care because my eyes burn so bad. They literally feel like they're gonna fall out of my head. So, we're gonna do two onions per recipe. So that's six in total. And then I've also got some peas and carrots for the shepherd's pie. So we are going to get started. And like always, I'm going to save the innards and I'm going to scrap the outer part of the skin because I use that for my broth. And look how beautiful that skin is. The whole point of doing the cabbage this way is just to let out all the moisture because if you don't do this step and you don't cook it and you just put the raw cabbage in with everything else, it's just gonna become a soupy mess. So I just wanna let out the moisture. You could, if you want to, if you're really crunched on time, take the fresh cabbage after you've cut it into four, squeeze as much of the water as you can out and then put it in here. But I've got some time because I've got to get potatoes boiling for the shepherd's pie. I've got all those onions that need to be sorted through. So I've got a lot of time. I'm good. This is getting nice and toasty brown and you can see the spots. I really like to pair caraway seeds with cabbage. I find it gives, it brings out the flavor in cabbage. Some people say that it helps you digest the cabbage better, um, but I read a study that once said that if you have cabbage as a regular part of your diet, it actually helps reduce the chances of prostate cancer. So I thought that was a really cool study. I don't, I, now mind you, I read this study like years and years ago. So I've just stuck to it and I love cabbage. I could eat raw, cabbage raw just personally. So we've got this here. Now, once this is done, I don't personally like doing the beef from raw and the cabbage at the same time. So I'm going to set this off to the side. I'm just going to find a container to do that. And then we're going to get the beef started. And because I really only have these two burners, like this one in the back is so small, it's really useless. I can't even get my kettle to go on it. But we are going to go and instead of using the mashed potatoes and well, boiling mashed potatoes in here, I'm gonna actually use my Instapot and then we're gonna get something else going, probably the meat for the burritos. Once this starts getting a tiny bit of color, I'm gonna put the turkey in, but I really wanna get started on those mashed potatoes. So I'm gonna do that next. I like keeping the skin on my potatoes. I find it gives it more flavor. This is the cheat sheet that came with the Instapot. Okay, potatoes, three to four minutes. Uh, small or whole? So I don't have them cubed and I don't have them whole. So let's go, because I did cut them in half. So let's go at the eight minute mark. Uh, okay, you know what, let's go nine. Let's go in the middle.
The reason why there's a bunch of like these floaty things was because I made the quesadillas in the pan this morning. And these are just like the leftover little bits of the cheese that kind of came off the quesadilla. So for this, I'm going to cook all of the onions together. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate what I need for the um, shepherd's pie and then what I need for the burritos. Here, I'm just putting back the sauteed cabbage that we made together before. I opened up a can of homemade crushed tomatoes and I'm just adding that as well as the tomato soup from the cup. Okay, I'm going to turn the heat off and this is done. The only thing we have left is the shepherd's pie and the chicken burritos. Polish rice is done. I've got two barbecue sauces that are almost empty. Like this one has just a tiny bit and this Jack Daniels one has maybe about two inches from the bottom. So I'm just going to use this one first. And we're going to pull out a chicken. We're going to smother it a little bit more with some Jack. And this is like, oh, it's such a good barbecue sauce. Oh, this is my absolute, absolute favorite, favorite barbecue sauce. I could just drink that bowl and not be ashamed to do it. All right. I'm going to just open that up. There we go. That's the part that usually you make the chicken fingers out of. And then we've got one more chicken in here. And this one has the piece I cut it off. So we're just going to lather these two up. And we're just going to let these two cook nice and slow. If you're worried about using leftover rice, because it's a little bit on the dry side, this stuff makes incredible chicken fried rice, beef fried rice, veggie fried rice, any kind of those, whatever protein you want to put in here, fried rice. It is amazing. It doesn't become mushy, but because I'm putting it in here, you just have to introduce a little bit of liquid into that. And then it just goes back to normal, which is awesome. I'm just taking my hands and I'm just breaking it up because you can get these like chunks in there. Just want to mix this in really well. I've got my own homemade chili seasoning and I just want to try out this combo because I've been switching it up a lot lately with just different ingredients and I do have um, a jar of beans that I canned up. Oh, I can really smell the cinnamon and nutmeg. I love, cinnamon is like kind of like a weird, it sounds like a weird spice to put into chili. And same with the nutmeg, but I find it just gives so much more flavor to it. And if you guys have been following this channel at all, you guys know my love of cinnamon. I put that stuff in everything. It's like some people with hot sauce, I guess. <laughs> all right, so we're just gonna give the celery, which is basically the only really tough vegetable in here, just a ch chance to wilt down before we put in the beans. If you're going to eat it fresh, you can just put this right up in a wrap and go ahead and eat it. But when it comes to freezing, if you were to put this in a wrap and throw it in the freezer right away, by the time that this cools, it's just going to be a mushy mess. And when you go to actually grab your wraps, you're not going to be able to. They're going to stick. They're going to disintegrate right in front of your eyes. I'm freezing these, so I can't put these in the wraps until everything has cooled. We are going to wait till this stops steaming and it's nice and thoroughly cooled. I've got the window open. 
and we're just gonna stick it right next to the door. So just like the burritos, we want this to cool off completely. And then I'm gonna cut it into pieces and then those are gonna go in the burritos. I'm gonna save this sauce because this is really, really delicious sauce. It's juice from the chicken and the two barbecue sauces combined. And we are gonna use this and we are gonna put this in our shepherd's pie with the beef. These are the onions that we had from before. So I'm gonna throw those in. And it's funny, it looks actually like sauerkraut, <laughs> but it's just minced garlic or minced onion. And I'm also gonna put in that broccoli in with this. Look at that beautiful gravy that's happening with that beef. Oh, this is gonna be amazing. And that chicken stock, chicken juice that came out of that chicken for the chicken burritos and this is going to come together and we still have to bake this so I'm not going to go crazy I'm actually going to turn off the heat right now because most of my beef it's pretty much cooked and I just want to make sure that this is nicely blended my potatoes are done and all I'm going to do is start opening up cans and starting to put everything together oh look at this let's start putting everything together so we're going to put the first layer of this in. That smells amazing. And I feel like shepherd's pie is a great way to use up stuff. Oh, my sous chef is here. I always, anytime I open up jars or cans of um, like corn or carrots or anything like that. I always give her the juice from it. There's no more for you. She's just licking her lips. I just gave her the peas and the, uh, the corn juice. Are you looking for more maple syrup? So that was one package of ground beef that was $1.50 because it was on sale and I'm really able to stretch it out. And this is another reason why I like putting minced vegetables in because you have a nice thick layer of meat now and we're just going to top it off with some corn. So I'm going to do one can of corn into each one. My kids love corn and over in the quarter acre. I bought a bag of, I think it's a hundred, um, hundred seeds of corn. Plus I have another 50 of another hybrid variety, which is very similar. So I've got 150 corn. So hopefully we get a nice big fat yield so that we can stop buying corn, canned corn from the store and leave the canned corn for other people who aren't able to grow their food. I'm only putting about a cup of cheese into each casserole. I did about a quarter cup of yogurt I did about an eighth of a cup of um, pumpkin seed milk and then I did about two tablespoons of my onion uh, onion jam aioli or onion jam mayo and if you're wanting to know how on earth I made it well there is a link down below where you could see that episode where I make four different kinds of aioli. Now they're not traditional aioli, they're more of a mayo, but they are absolutely amazing. So the only tricky thing is with putting mashed potatoes on a shepherd's pie is to not have the whole shepherd's pie come with your spoon, which is exactly what's trying to happen here. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut really, really thin strips 
of the chicken because I want this chicken to go really, really far. And with the amount of vegetables that is in the burritos, I find that I don't have to use a ton of meat and my family's happy, which I'm really lucky. See, it already looks like quite a bit of chicken and it's only really two chicken breasts and not really because, and not entirely two chicken breasts because one of them was missing the little piece that you usually make um, chicken fingers out of. So right here, we've got our chicken. We've got our veggies that we did together. We've got the beans that I canned a while back and we've already got some shredded mozzarella and we've got our wraps that I bought for a buck 50 when it was on sale, which is awesome. And we also have our dishes that we're gonna put them into. The other great thing that you could do with these burritos is you could actually individually wrap them with aluminum foil. So if you've got older kids and they've got you know activities after school that you're running to right after you pick them up from school, Individually wrap each one of these in aluminum foil, throw them in the oven, and then all you have to do is just give them to each kid and it's already pre-packaged for them in a nice tight container with aluminum foil. You don't have to worry about it dripping all over the truck or the car and you've got a great nutritious meal for them just before their music lessons, sports, or tutoring, whatever they have. And when you wrap them, I always go top to the bottom, then I swing it around, and then you wanna go all the way over to this end, and then you wanna pull it towards yourself, and you wanna tuck everything in, and I always stick my fingers right in the corners, and you fold it over, and there you've got a nice, beautiful wrap, and it fits perfectly in the dish. The kids are helping me with the maple peanut butter and pecan oat, like granola oats. I don't actually know what the name is, but it's basically becoming, it becomes like a crumbly granola and we can eat this either on top of yogurt or as a cereal. And one's got all of the wet ingredients and the other one's got the dry ingredients. And because I don't put my kids on social media, you won't be able to see the whole process but I will be able to show you the end result. So basically what you're gonna do with this recipe is just take all of the dry ingredients, mix them up together, take all the wet ingredients, mix those up together, and then you're gonna combine everything and then bake it. But I will link the in recipe down below yum, yum. for this. The granola is done and let me show you what it looks like. We take this granola and once it's cooled off, I break it up into chunks and you can either put it on your um you can either put it on your cereal or you can put it on top of yogurt or you can eat it as a cereal and just put milk on it so it's really versatile and we ended up putting peanut butter in with this batch you don't have to but this stores amazing we just break it up into chunks once it's cooled because there's no point in doing it when it's hot because it, it just doesn't crumble as nicely when it's hot and I just put it in a big jar, uh, glass jar, and the kids just take out what they want in the morning, and that one is done. For this recipe, I added in some roasted red peppers that I had in the fridge and they've been sitting there for a long time. I'm pretty much the only one that eats them. Nobody really, they, my family likes them, but nobody goes to grab them. I didn't push the record and I have all of this done. This is two turkey breasts. I put in about a teaspoon of freshly ground pepper. I put in a tablespoon of roasted garlic powder. I put in two tablespoons of parsley and two tablespoons of lemon thyme. And I put in almost um, a cup and a half of breadcrumbs. And these are my breadcrumbs. This is a very old container. This is not the breadcrumbs. The, I, I've had this for years and years. These are my breadcrumbs for my bread that I make. Um, and all I do is, and I also put three eggs in here. And I just mixed it up with that you can see the flecks of red from the roasted red peppers 
that I put in here. And I'm gonna show you guys what I use to maintain my burger bun or my burger patty shape. At this time, I am not sponsored by anyone, but I just wanna share with you guys what I use to maintain the burger patty shape. For years and years, I was messing around with um, cookie sheets and having parchment paper on them. And it was just like, I love making my own burgers, but I don't wanna make them the day of, and you know, if I don't have time for it, and I wanna make them ahead of time. So, I believe this is from a Canadian company. Yep, they're made in Canada. And it's called Shape Plus Store. I don't know if you can see that. I'll try to find them online or I'll link their website. I don't even know how long I've had these for. They're so old and they are awesome. What you do is they also come in different shapes. So, or not different shapes, but different sizes. I think they have, I think it's like a quarter pound or half pound burger patty that you can make. And they also have ones that are smaller that like for sliders. This is the lid for it and they basically correspond like this. So this is the bottom and what you do is you're gonna fill the bottom up with either ground beef, ground turkey, ground chicken, whatever, ground fish, if you wanna make like fish um, patties. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna fill this up. Now the great thing about this is that this is the thickness that it takes up in your freezer because you can also stack these guys. So I actually own two of them. And what you do is, and I'm gonna show you guys, you fill this up and then all you have to do is you have to line this up. See how there's a notch that's missing right there? There's a notch right here. And all you do is you put this on top, you squish it down, once your meat is in there, of course, and then that's it. And it only takes up this much space. And then when you go to barbecue, you just open this up. All you have to do is just break them apart. So if you want one burger, you grab one. If you want two, you grab two and so on and so forth until this is empty. It's dis dishwasher safe, uh, is it? Oh yeah, okay, here it is. Dishwasher safe, you can't throw it in the microwave or the oven, and it's good for minus 40, uh, 40 C. Uh, oh, you can grill, like obviously what's inside, but you can't like grill this because it's silicone. And once frozen, you open up this side. I don't, only because I have found just me personally, I just noticed it read that, but I've noticed that I tried like years ago to like open this and I found that I had a hard time getting them out of this. So I actually like opening it up this way and just breaking off a piece this way and popping it out and throwing it on the grill. Over here, we've got our fish burgers and our turkey burgers, and I'll pretty much have one. My husband will have one or two, and the kids will either have half each or one each. So it do, depends. Sometimes we can get three meals out of this, but we, we can get two for sure out of each one. So there's four meals right there. We've got our barbecue um, chicken drumsticks, which this is about one, maybe two meals, depending on how hungry the boys are. And then over here, we've got our burritos. We've got two containers over here and these, everything is frozen here. So uh, this is one meal, that's another meal, which is awesome. And here we've got our shepherd's pie that we made with a little bit of the barbecue sauce that we had left over. And this is easily one meal. Sometimes we have leftovers for lunches. And over here we've got our Polish rice, which is what we call it. It's basically my take on traditional Polish cabbage rolls. And over here we've got our homemade cereal, which, oh, it tastes amazing. We have already been tapping into this. We had this this morning for breakfast before the kids went to school and they ranted and raved about it. And I was told by the older one that why didn't I double this recipe? I already had. <laughs> and over here, we've got our chicken soup. We've got tomato soup. We've got our turkey stew somewhere right over there in the back. And these are easily one meal each for the four of us. And then I use these little ones just because I didn't have any more of these guys left, but also we've got little individual sized. And if we make a side salad, me and my husband can split this at lunch because we both work from home. And this is all of the good things that we made yesterday. How awesome is that? So that's, okay, say two, four, six, 
7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Uh, so 20 dinners and then some individuals and then cereal. This is awesome. Thanks again for watching. Make sure you hit that like button. Leave a comment down below. I'd love to know what your thoughts are on all of this or on other episodes of my channel. And until next time, make sure you're having fun in the kitchen and I'll see you again soon. Bye guys.